guys, this is Craig with Bowler Performance Transmissions. Today we're going to do a quick video on how to set up your bell housing alignment for your transmission installation. This is a critical step in doing any setup on a transmission to ensure that we get the input shaft of the transmission in perfect alignment with the crankshaft of the engine. So, kind of a quick overview of the two different types of bell housings that you'll encounter when doing a tremic installation will be one, the traditional four speed style where you've got a nice round opening here to measure concentric alignment from. Now this is a steel aftermarket bell housing but any of your factory GM aluminum or Ford aluminum style bell housings will be set up the same way and the measurements will be identical from one to the other as far as how we take those measurements. The other style that you'll encounter is for the Magnum six speed. As you can see with this particular one, there's a couple different weird cutouts for pump setup, for hydraulic lines, those types of things, so it doesn't give you a nice good circle to take that measurement from. So in this instance, what we're going to have to do is actually remove the front cover from the transmission and place it onto the bell housing. And once we have that bolted up, we have a nice concentric circle here where the input shaft comes to the transmission that we can take our measurements from. Now it's not a real easy way to go, but at this point, it's about the best way to do it because there's nothing really out on the market to allow you to do it any better than that. Um, from there, my only bit of advice is if you have the engine out of the car, it's always ideal to do this setup at that point. In the video, you'll see we're going to actually do the alignment on a car that's got the engine still in it, so you can see how it can be done that direction as well. So one thing I want to talk about real quick before we get started putting all of this back together some of the important things we need to remind ourselves kind of leading up to this to get ourselves prepared to make sure that everything's set up so that way when we do these readings that we're going to get some accuracy to them so one of the really important parts about this is making sure that the the actual engine block is clean and it's not rusty there's not paint build up on it things like that that can offset the readings a little bit because we want to be able to when we bolt the bell housing up the mating surface of the back of the block to the bell housing needs to be perfectly clean and, and free of anything that could get in the way of giving it a little bit offset because we're going to also check for parallel on the bell housing to the engine block itself as well as we're going to check for runout on the flywheel before we start deciding how much concentric runout we have inside the bell housing itself. So these two things are going to be important first steps before we get to setting that part of it up. One of the things that you'll also want to keep in mind with doing this is the dowel pins on the block themselves. You want to make sure that they're nice and clean and then they protrude enough out of the block that when the bell housing is slid on there that you actually get the solid center portion of the dowel pin all the way up to the flange edge of the bell housing. You don't want the tapered end of the dowel pin to actually be down inside of there so if need be you may have to tap the dowel pins forward just a slight amount to get them to that point. One thing to remember too when we're setting up our dial indicator base is a lot of times you'll have a unit like this one right here that the magnet flips on and off of. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to mount that in the closest to the center of the flywheel as we can. It's not critically important that it's dead nuts in the middle, but you're going to want at least to have a nice solid foundation for it to mount from. So a lot of times what may happen is you'll put something up there and it'll have a little bit of a wobble to it. Um, you know, depending on the base that you're working with, but you definitely don't want any movement. You want it to nice solid um, platform for it to rest on. So if that's the case, sometimes it might be necessary to remove one or two of the flywheel bolts that might be causing it to hang up a little bit. Because the one thing we don't want to happen is as we're rotating the engine later is for there to be any resistance and it could possibly throw this reading off. Um, another thing as far as setting up the dial indicator for checking flywheel run out. There's a couple different ways you could go about doing this. A lot of times you can mount the base here on the oil pan. Some guys might be able to mount it here on the block. You just want a nice solid foundation to start from that you can rest your dial indicator on the flywheel so that way whenever you're spinning it around and checking for run out, it's nothing that it's mounted to is going to be moving. As you can see, I've got the uh, dial indicator set up right now to check flywheel run out on this particular engine. Um, one disclaimer I want to make real quick is through watching this video, you'll notice a lot of the little 
detail parts of this I'm leaving out just for time's sake, but the whole purpose of this video is really just getting the theory down and just kind of giving you a, a better idea of how this procedures are done and the best way to go about them that we've found. Um, one thing to remember with uh, flywheel run out is we're checking for how true the flywheel is to the crankshaft, making sure you know that if say by chance you had a, a an original style flywheel, cast iron factory style, some of those may or may not be as true as say an aftermarket billet unit like this particular one. But what you want to do is set up your dial indicator, zero it out. You'll want to run a couple rotations just to verify uh, consistent repeatability. So you'll make say a mark here where we're starting and you'll rotate it once, twice, as long as you keep hitting zero in that same spot again you know you've got everything set up properly and we're not getting in any inconsistencies. Um, from there, you'll wanna to check to see if there's any spots that are going less than zero. If you do have anything going into the negative, you wanna mark that area. Um, if you don't see any negatives and you only see positives from there, you wanna mark um, where your highest spots are and then uh, check from there and see where your total indicator runout ends up at. Um, from what I've seen and read, most of the uh, indications are that you'll want anywhere you know no more than five thousandths total indicator run out on a flywheel especially on just like a normal street driven car uh, anything high performance one thousandths or less is probably the norm on something like that okay so now that we're to the point um, checking our bell housing parallel to the block alignment we've already got our flywheel run out set and that's been checked and determined that it's set so now we've got the bell housing bolted on, bolts torqued down to spec, and I've got the dial indicator centered up as best I can on the flywheel, and then we're going to mount our dial indicator so that it is reading this circle of the mounting flange for the transmission itself, because this is just as critical that this is parallel with the block as is anything else, so that way when the transmission's baited up against here, there's nothing that's going to alter the angle that the transmission is sitting at. Um, one trick that you may want to try just to help you out, if you've got a bell housing that's got a pivot ball hole in it, you can just put a piece of clear packing tape over that hole just so that way when you're sweeping that the needle has something to ride across instead of falling down into that hole. But again, like with our flywheel, what we're going to want to do is start with a 12 o'clock location here. We're going to make a couple sweeps around just to check for consistency in our mounting on our dial indicator for repeatability. And then from there, you're gonna to wanna to check for any low spots, any high spots that are gonna be in this area on the mounting flange. Total indicator run out for bell housing parallel alignment, you're gonna to wanna to be at least two thousandths or less. If it is more than that, likely you're gonna end up having to shim the bell housing at some location to get that reading into that two thousandths range. Okay, so next we're gonna check for concentric alignment on the bell housing opening itself. Since this is gonna be the critical area where the bearing retainer of the transmission guides inside of the bell housing to locate the input shaft into the back of the crankshaft, we're gonna make sure that everything is lined up in all directions so that we get a nice straight shot in there and we don't get any preload onto the input shaft which can cause some major issues was shifting, uh, bearing wear, noise, etc. So I've got the, uh, the magnetic base set up on the flywheel right now, and I've got my dial indicator set up here at 12 o'clock. So what we're gonna do then is you're gonna make a couple sweeps all the way around the circle. You wanna do that twice for repeatability, make sure that we are starting and ending at zero each time. Once we've got that set, then you'll wanna make a couple sweeps and note where you get the most negative number going around the circle and it can be anywhere on the circle that that's going to happen um, so we'll check that and we'll see where we end up from that point okay so we've got everything lined up on this bell housing so we've done our initial sweeps we triggered ourselves that we were stationary on the mount so what we did then is we made a couple rotations found the most negative point in the circle which happened to be right here at about seven o'clock or so. Um, that's gonna be our new zero starting point. So what we'll do is re-zero the dial indicator at your most negative reading, and then from there, make a couple more sweeps, 
to determine where our highest reading will then be, which in theory should be directly across from our most negative reading. So on this particular bell housing, we ended up at 8,000s total run out when it was all said and done. This gives us enough play that we fall into range of the 10,000s total indicator run out that is spec'd out for these transmissions. So if you fall above that 10,000s range, let's say yours happen to be 28,000s. And so what we would then do is we would have to do a set of offset dowel pins to get the bell housing corrected. So you would take that 28,000s, divide that in two to get your 14,000s, and that's where we got to get enough offset then to counteract that. Okay, as you can see right now, I've got the uh, bell housing and the front cover bolted on. You're going to want to go ahead and torque all your bell housing and your front plate bolts down two specs so that everything is just like it would be when you're going to be installed. We're going to take our magnetic base of our dial indicator and mount it onto the crankshaft flange or onto the flywheel, whichever is easiest for you and how you have it set up currently. And then we're going to mount the dial indicator on where it's riding right on this inside of the bearing race of this front cover. And I've got it marked here zero, so that's going to be kind of our starting point. And then we're going to rotate the engine around and we're going to note at a couple different locations what our measurements are so we can check for the uh, total indicator run out for this particular bell housing combination. According to the measurements that we came up with by doing this, we still find that we fall within the spec that uh, Tremec gives us, which is within 10 thousandths total indicator run out. So, so, so we got no more than 7 thousandths total on all those sweeps that we made on this. We fall into range and we will not need to use any offset dowel pins. Now, if by chance yours would fall out of the 10 thousandths range, they do make offset dowel pins that you would use to locate your bell housing onto the block and that moves the bell housing left, right, up, down, whichever direction that you need it to go. One particular part I want to mention real quick as well, whenever you're running your dial indicator sweep around this bearing race, there's two slots, one here and one opposite of it that you gotta be careful for. So when that uh, end of the dial indicator gets there, you'll just wanna lightly pick it up and let it ride across and set it back down while you're cranking the engine in that rotational direction. Okay, so now that we've got all of our tolerances within spec, we've checked our flywheel run out, we've checked our bell housing for parallel to the block, and we've checked the concentric circle on our bell housing opening for the transmission to slide in and fit properly. All of these things obviously are much easier to do with an engine out of the car, but in a lot of cases, we're doing these transplants while the engine's still in. It's a running driving car, so doing it up under the car like that kind of gives you a better idea of how to perform some of these features uh, while the engine's still in the car. Um, doing it outside the car, obviously, is going to take a little bit of a different uh, approach as far as how you're going to mount your dial indicator, but it does give you a lot more room to work and a lot easier area to work with. Um, from there, uh, the most important thing to remember, and the whole reason really we do this is just to get this transmission to live properly and function properly. If you've just laid down a couple thousand dollars to do a, a conversion in your car, the last thing you want to do is slide a transmission in there and a thousand miles down the road you're having shifting problems, you've got uh, bearing noise, your clutch isn't working properly. All of these things work together in harmony. And so we got to make sure that we get all of those alignments done correctly up front the first time. It's always good just to go ahead, sacrifice that time and energy to make sure it's done right, right out of the gate. That way you'll have years of trouble for use with your new transmission. If you got any other questions, always feel free to call us here at the shop. Our number is 618-943-4856 or also go to our website, bowlertransmissions.com. We've got plenty of printed resources on there as well that you can download, print off, and gives you the whole printed instruction set on how to perform all of these procedures that we just did here as well. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.